or the mainstream media could no longer try to convince you, try to manipulate you, try to gaslight you into believing Hello everyone, George Gammon, an investor, macroeconomics expert, and host of The Rebel Capitalist Show, outlines the potential hard landing scenarios for the U.S. economy. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. What does this hard landing look like? How does it play out? How do you see things uh, unfolding from where we are? No certainties, only probabilities. We could have a garden variety recession like we had in, let's say, the early 1990s, or it could be a, a GFC 2.0 like we had in 2008. Um, if I'm going to put money on it, my base case is that it would be a much more severe recession, maybe not to the degree to what we saw in 2008, 2009, but at, at the very least, something we saw during uh, dot com or maybe in the early 1980s at, at the very least. And the reason I say that, Michelle, is again, it goes back to the interconnectivity of the banking system. And, and you just, it's almost impossible to have a super, super soft landing in the environment where everyone in the Tour de France is millimeters apart. And you have all this systemic risk. And then the banks are not only, not only do they have this systemic risk, but they're taking on, they're forced to take on even more risk because they have to go out that risk curve to buy derivatives for heaven's sakes, CLOs, because it's the only way they can manage their balance sheet and stay afloat. And then they just sit there and keep their fingers crossed that the Fed is going to drop rates to bail them out. But unfortunately, even if the Fed drops rates, they usually drop rates in response to a crisis, which although interest rates might be lower, the outstanding environment is even worse than it was before. And this is, we go back to cycles, and this is the way it's always played out. And because of the amount of debt, not just on the public balance sheet, but on the private balance sheet, because of the economic distortions that were created during the COVID lockdowns, and it wasn't because of COVID. Let's be very, right. very clear. It was because the government's response to COVID. At some point, you've got to pay the fiddler. The rubber meets the road. And for all of these reasons and a lot more, that's why my base case would be that we have a hard landing and we don't have a soft landing. I would encourage any of your viewers, uh, Michelle, to go back, just do a thought experiment. In late 2019, if I would have told you that all these insane governments around the world were going to lock their citizens in a cage for two years, for two years in some cases, and they were not going to allow them to produce anything, they weren't going to allow them to actually work or produce goods and services, which by the way is the definition of wealth. And they were gonna do this for two years, basically the global economy was going to be on deep freeze, on lockdown for two years straight. And I said, what would your base case be as far as coming out of that? You would have said an economic depression that makes the 1930s look like a picnic. It looked like a picnic. Okay, fine. Well, now we're on the other side of that. And do you think that just because we got some stimmy checks and just because we got some PPP loans that we just got a free lunch? And we're not going to have to pay the price for the governments doing that to their citizens and completely destroying the global supply chains? Of course not. Of could course you, not. Could you say the price, though, is just crazy inflation and not necessarily uh, a, a recession that goes with it as well? Could you just say that the price is devaluation and debasement of your currency, which, again, <laughs> very bad in its own right, and inflation, but not necessarily an economic slowdown? I think that definitely contributes to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's part of the price that we have to pay as a society, especially the poor and middle class. The fact that their wages have not gone up at the rate of consumer price inflation, the stuff that they have to buy, so their purchasing power overall has gone down, which is why we see the delinquency rates go up and all the things that we talked about before. 40% of Americans are worried they're not going to be able to put 
food on the table. But could the release valve only, only be consumer price inflation? Yeah, it could. It absolutely could. That's a possibility. But I'm, but my view of the world is that that's a low probability and that the higher probability is that we do have a hard landing in addition to that. And again, that's, just, that's not me just pulling my opinions out of the air. Uh, it, it's not just me being bearish. All I am doing is looking at past cycles and I'm looking at what the banks and the financial insiders are telling me based on what they're doing with their own money. So when do you see this hard landing hitting? Like I said, New York Fed says uh, June of 2025. Yeah, so, you know, you can never get these time, the timing down. Yeah, sure. And I've definitely been early here. You know, I'll admit, I, if you would have told me that we'd be in July of uh, 2024 and we would not have had a, a negative GDP print or unemployment be at 4.1, I would have said the probability of that would be low. Uh, if you would have asked me that, let's just say 12 months ago. So I, I definitely got the timing wrong, for sure, for sure, for sure. But uh, the way that you'll know if I'm wrong, um, if, I, if I've got this wrong in general, is when the curve uninverts due to a bear steepener. That's another thing that I've always said. The way that you tell if this time is different is you see an uninversion due to a bear steepener. And we're seeing the opposite. We're seeing uh, the bull steepener actually play out in real time right in front of our eyes. I was talking about timing when you anticipate this uh, hard landing to really hit. And as I said, yeah, the so New York Fed puts a 56% chance of it hitting by June of 2025. Great point. So this is where I would look at narrative. And I think narrative is something that all of your viewers should really pay attention to. Especially and in an election year. I'm sorry? Especially in an election year. Well, that's right. That's right. But more so, uh, what I look at is the narrative that I see within the marketplace. And let me be more specific. When we go through these cycles, let's say 2013, 2014, we get to a point, and we'll just use the S&P 500 as a proxy for this, where good news is actually good news. So we see the unemployment rate start to go down. We see the economy starting to improve. We see home prices flattening out. And therefore, hey, this is great. Let's go ahead and take risk and buy some of the S&P 500. And then it goes up and up and up and up and to the point where the good news starts turning into bad news. But the market being always having this tendency toward being bullish, they say, oh, well, this bad news isn't really bad news because it means the Fed's going to drop interest rates. And we know that if the Fed drops interest rates, that's great for stocks, completely ignoring a possibility of recession, right? But this is, the, this is how the narrative changes. And so we go from good news being good news to bad news being good news. But we get to a point, Michelle, where bad news becomes bad news. And I think that there's a high likelihood that we hit that turning point, that paradigm shift just the other day when we got the soft CPI report. So this would have been, uh, I've been moving, so I've been out of loop, you'll have to forgive me. I think it was a couple Fridays ago where we had a soft CPI report. So you would have expected, that's kind of bad news, but that means the Fed's gonna drop rates a lot faster, at least the market perception. And therefore you would expect stocks to rip higher, rip higher, especially the NASDAQ, especially those growth stocks like the MAG7 or whatever they're called. But instead we saw the exact opposite. Now, initially I thought, okay, let's not jump to any conclusions. This could just be profit taking because these stocks are so up and it could just be some sort of rotation into the Russell, 2000 or something like that. But we've, but if you look at what has happened since then, the NASDAQ especially has continued to drop off a cliff, off a cliff. And it doesn't really matter what type of news we get, the NASDAQ still goes down. So I think just that rotation of the rush, Russell was probably temporary just because people were like, okay, we've squeezed out all the blood out of this turnip that we possibly can you know, the NASDAQ. <laughs> and now we have to get some sort of return. And the only way that we're going to do it is buy these garbage stocks. 
in the Russell 2000 that aren't even making a profit because those should be better. It's basically like buying the unprofitable junior miners, right? That's the, it's the transition from the big ones to the, the juniors that have much more risk. But at a certain point, they realize that, oh no, I've made a huge mistake here because the unemployment rate gets goes up, the data uh, turns, the majority of the data gets softer and softer and softer. And that's when the market wakes up and realizes, holy cow, right. I am way off sides. You know, another example that I would give of that phenomenon, Michelle, was the debates the other day. Remember when Trump debated Biden and prior to this debate, if you listen to the mainstream media and you even insinuated that Joe Biden might not be as sharp as a tack, what would they do? Oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. You're a tinfoil hatter. Okay, Alex Jones, blah, 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 right? But all of a sudden, it was the, the evidence because of that live debate was overwhelming to the point where the mainstream media could no longer try to convince you, try to manipulate you, try to gaslight you, into believing that Joe Biden had not lost the majority of his mental faculties. That's an example of bad news becoming bad news. The mar there's so much of it, the market says, okay, we've got to sell, 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 sell. And so this takes us back to the Fed dropping rates and what they might do. Once they start the cycle where they're dropping rates and dropping rates quickly, that's usually when you see the majority of the decline in the S&P 500. And so that's kind of the timing mechanism that I'm using for my own portfolio. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of George Gammon. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.